Hallelujah. This is not my tablet. <laughs> so, um, in timing, that always seems to be the case in the middle of doing anything. Um, I finished my notes up last night for this message, uh, shut my tablet off, plugged it into the charger, got up this morning, was getting ready, grabbed my tablet, tried to turn it on, wouldn't come on, looked at the, it had the little light on that said it was still charging. It should have been charged overnight. So, uh, needless to say, I grabbed another charger and plugged it in and went on about trying to get ready in the hopes that it would charge and come on. I managed to get 7% on my tablet, which was enough for me to send an email from my tablet to myself thinking, all right, well, worst case scenario, we'll rethink the stream because the stream is on my phone and I can at least then have my notes on my phone. Um, but fortunately, we have these uh, iPads the worship team uses, and they were able to get logged in. And you guys are blessed because there's only 59% left on this battery, so they were <laughs> limiting me right out of the gate with making sure that my notes would die in a certain time frame. Wow. So, so a little humor for this morning. But, you know, invariably, in everything that we do in life, um, there's going to be trials. There's going to be from the littlest hurdle of, you know, a tablet that didn't charge to some of the bigger hurdles which we're looking at and we're facing right now. Um, you know, one of the things for me as we step into this before I really get into, the, get into this message is, you know, Hebrews chapter 5 and this dynamic that, that is talked about in the 14th verse of Hebrews chapter 5, it says, it says that they had, their senses were exercised. Yes to discern that which was good and that which was evil. So there is a, a moment that we're in right now where it requires a significant amount of discernment. That's right. In First Chronicles chapter 12, it talks about this group that was part of David's yes. mighty men that were called the sons of Iskar. And it says that they knew the times, they understood yes. the times, but beyond that, not only did they understand the times, but they knew what Israel should do in those times. Yes. And so God is calling forth, I believe, a body that is able to, through discernment, right. recognize what God's doing in this season and is able to portray to the body, yes. as Israel was back then, the body of Christ is now, that yes. we are to be able to provide some direction. Yes. And some of that direction comes from passages like First or Second Timothy Praise one God. seven right. that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, Amen. or Romans eight that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Yeah. And so part of the direction is providing some comfort, some yes. assurance, some stability yeah. in those who are struggling right now with fear. I could totally relate to Linda's testimony about fear in two thousand eight. For me, it wasn't two thousand eight. For me, it was two thousand one. Obviously, 2008 was different, but I'd already gone through my 2001, so when 2008 happened, I didn't have any, any fear because I knew that God was going to take care of us. But in 2001, in similar fashion, we owned a business, and we had just, because of the timing, August is typically the big advertising season. So you spend a whole bunch of money on advertising when you own a business in August. Back then, some of you are too young to remember the back then. But back then, we had these things called yellow pages. <laughs> and so, you know, businesses actually would buy an ad in the yellow pages. And so then there was yellow pages in different areas. And so you would buy an ad in this area, but wait, what if they live on the other side of that line? So then you would buy an ad over there, and then you would buy an ad over there, and then you would buy it. Before you know it, you know, Lila and I were sitting on $30,000 worth of advertising, which may not seem like a lot, but we were a two-man small business, yes. you know, that was just her and I running this business, and that was a lot of money. And so we bought all these Yellow Page ads. We had this thing called Valpac. Does anybody remember Valpac? Yes. Okay. So, we, had, you know, we spent a bunch of money on Valpac and sent all these mailings out for all of these people to come and participate in our business. And no more than we had got those things out the door than 9-11 hit. Oh. And everybody stopped spending money. Yeah. So all of this advertising that we spent, which we were on the hook for, the down payments <laughs> we had, they had been made, we'd already sunk most of our savings into that. And all of a sudden, the phone stopped ringing. It stopped ringing like 
even before that, it was ringing. We were trying to get it to ring more, and it was ringing less and less and less. And we were, we were in that place of, what are we going to do for our family? And you know, God faithfully provided through that season. When we came to 2008, I lost my job in September of 2008, right after the August tank. Uh, I was laid off because of, you know, all of, the, all of this stuff. And within one week, not seven days, we just said, Lord, you're in control. Yeah. You know what's going on. You know what we need to have to survive. And within one week, I had a better paying job that was a more stable job Hallelujah. that had better benefits and it had better provision for our family. So the reality of it is, is we have an opportunity here as the world is looking at chaos and the world is falling down under fear to lift them up under faith and say that we know what God's doing. Yes. We know that God has a plan. We know that on the other side of this is greater things than what we see on this side of this. Yes. And we can't see through it. But through discernment, through listening to the Holy Spirit and through listening to the voice of God, we know what's on the yeah, other side preach. of it. And so this morning, I'm gonna, we're going to pray. Just, just real quick, we're going to pray. But I want to tell you this. Um, there's a Kairos moment and there's Kronos times and seasons. We've been living in Kronos times and seasons. We are in a Kairos moment. How we respond as the body of Christ determines what happens on the next side. And what I'm going to talk about this morning is, is the exodus out of uh, when the Israelites were set free from captivity out of, out of Egypt. And there in that moment, in that exodus, there was yes. a Kairos moment in the midst of a 400-year-long season That's right. that they had been in. And so yeah. recognizing that, there's two key things out of that that I want to talk about before we pray, before we really get into the message. Um, the difference between a sovereign moment and a kairos moment can be seen in Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. And that's on the backside. On the backside, Joshua has taken over from Moses. He's getting ready to lead his people into the promised land. He comes up upon the flaming man. That's right. <laughs> With his sword in hand. Hallelujah. And he says, Joshua says, are you for us or are you against us? And he says, neither. <laughs> neither. As commander of the armies of the Lord, I have come. In other words, this moment is mine. You will choose whether you're going to line up with me and what I'm doing in this next season. That's right. It's not a, am I for you or against you. It's whether you're going to get into obedience and fall in behind me as commander. But he says this phrase. He says that it's the commander of the armies of the Lord. And we don't think anything of that. We just move on and say, okay, this is kind of a big deal. Until we look back Amen. at Exodus. In Exodus, Amen. And in Exodus chapter uh, 12 and verse 41. Exodus chapter 12 is the story of the Exodus. Exodus chapter 12 verse 41 it says... That all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So you don't see the correlation until you recognize that that's the phrasing where God says, I'm moving my army forward and I'm going to take command of that army and we're going to do Amen. something. And it's not going to be whether or not you, you know, the 400 years, it's not going to be what you thought it was going to be. But you better choose right now, body of Christ. On the other side of this, are you going to be obedient to the direction that God yeah. has pointed us? Yeah. Or are you going to be like the Israelites were, which immediately when they saw Pharaoh on the backside of it, turned and said, it would have been better for us if we'd stayed just like it Jesus. was. And I hear a lot of conversations right now from a lot of different leaders in the church who are saying, we just need to hunker down and get through this and things will get back to the way they were. And that phrase, the way they were, I just want to tell you this morning, I don't believe there is a way they were anymore. Because God sovereignly has interjected in this timeline with a Kairos moment that will change the direction of the body of Christ because there is a second advent that is coming. And he is going to point his church towards that coming. If that means the landscape looks different, if that means how we meet looks different, if that means how we worship as a community of faith looks different, if that means how we serve into the communities looks different, we have a choice to say not, God, are you for us or are you against us? But will we line up with him as he moves into this next season? Yeah. And that for me is exciting. 
So I'm not yeah. looking at this coronavirus and this COVID-19 as something to be fearful of because I know who God is. Yeah. I know his nature. I know what he yeah. has for me. I know what Jeremiah 29 11 says. I know what Romans chapter 8 yeah. says. I know that he's got a plan. I know that he's got a purpose. His purpose isn't stopped or defined by things like this. That's right. But he will use it to turn his body right. into a direction but they have not gone. Let me give you an example of that. One of the, one of the, Lila and I do a family ministry and children's ministry. And one of the number one excuses that we hear from parents as to why they, A, don't disciple their kids or B, don't have their kids at church or they aren't consistent is because they are too busy. Extracurricular activities, it's sports, it's band, it's debate, it's this, it's that. It's, I gotta have my kids here. I gotta have my kids there. We're separated. The first thing that happened out of this was God removed that obstacle. Sports was cut off. Sports practice, everything else. The second thing you removed from that obstacle, school. Kids, now you're at home with your family. Hallelujah. The third thing you removed from that obstacle was workplace context. He said, Mom and Dad, guess what you get to do? Go home and be with your kids. I want to reestablish Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want to reestablish Deuteronomy chapter 11, and I'm going to remove every obstacle from you stepping into that path. So now what is it? I'm the commander of the Lord's army. Are you going to choose to obey and get behind me, or are you going to look for me to get behind you before you are against me? And that's just one example. There's so many, as we look at this, where God is sovereignly moving to change the dynamic, to change the landscape of how we do ministry, how we do family, how we do life together. It's a moment where we have the opportunity to see Acts chapter 2 in the 42nd through the 47th verse. It says they had everything in common and they served one another's needs. They got together. They were praying together in homes. They were doing meals in homes. I see that on the horizon. I see in Acts 2020, in the year 2020, yeah. that there's going to be corporate types of <laughs> gatherings. That's not going to die, I don't believe. But there's going to be a new emphasis on how we do life together out of this scenario. It's a 1 John 3, 17 opportunity where, where the Bible says in 1 John 3, 17, it says, if you have the world's goods, I have toilet paper. Does anybody need toilet paper? <laughs> I have some toilet paper. Um, mainly because, I, you know, we're a family of nine. So you just have that. I mean, it's just one of those things you have. Nobody waits until you're down to the last couple of rolls. I mean, we're like, we're on the last package, go get toilet paper. Because you never know what's going to happen with seven kids in the house. I'm, I'm not even going to. If I was my friend, Chris, who is a youth minister, he would have gone somewhere there that I'm just, I'm, I'll stay away from. But it says, he who has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and is not moved with compassion to meet those needs, how is the love of God even in him? This is a dynamic that we're seeing that God is setting up, uh, what I believe God is setting up, the opportunity on the other side of this. So he's changing the landscape to give opportunity to the body of Christ to rise up, and as Linda said, and as Pastor Bill has said, and all of us have said, to, that this could be the finest hour the church has yeah, ever seen. Right. And for some of us, generationally, you haven't been through some of those things. I'm looking back here at some of you all. You probably don't remember what 2008 looked like for, for some people. Some of you may not have even been born. Right. You don't know what 2001 looked like for a lot of people. But there are some of us here who have walked in maturity and who have seasoned and who have, through Hebrews 5, we have trained our senses to discern what God is doing. God's calling us moms and dads who've lived through that to Titus 2 yes. and to begin to influence a generation yes. that's never walked through this kind of turmoil, that's never walked through this kind of process and lead them to an assurance Hallelujah. of a foundation that God is in control and they are on his rock. Amen. 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 So I want to pray two things and then I'm going to preach, right? That was all three. <laughs> I want to pray two things. I want to pray Ephesians 1. Yes. And I want to pray 2 Kings chapter 6, which is two passages of scripture that talk specifically about the eyes of our understanding yes. being enlightened or being, being opened so that we can see what God is doing in this season. 
And then I'm going to pray for Pastor Bill and Michael and those Amen. that are at the bottom of the line. Light for the next step. I don't need to see all the way on the other side of this, Lord. I just need to see the light for this step, Father. And I think there's some out there that are just asking for that little bit of light, Father. Would you shed light in our hearts so we can take the next step forward with you? And, Father God, I just pray, according to that 2 Kings 6, Lord, that your servant's eyes would be open, that they would see the Isaiah 91 protection over them in that moment, in that context from this coronavirus in Jesus' Amen. name. And Father God, right now in quarantine in Guatemala, Lord, I pray for divine appointments yes. of ministry. You have yes. you have two kings yes. in the kingdom there ministering, Father. Jesus. Release anointing from Hallelujah. them. Create those appointments that they can pour yes. into and that they can serve those people there. Thank you, Jesus. We miss them, Lord. Not just from a leadership standpoint, we miss them because they're our friends. Our hearts long for them because of the separation, and not just the separation, but the angst of the unknown oh of God, when can, God, when, and how can God, they get out of there and come home. Yes. So, Father, I pray right now, now Isaiah chapter 11. Yes. Lord, Lord, sorry, Isaiah 26. Yes. Father, I pray for peace. I pray for the ability to keep our minds stayed on you so that you can keep our hearts and our minds in perfect peace. Thank you, Jesus. We know that you're in control right now. Yes. We know that this is a sovereign Kairos moment for the church. So, Father, we ask that you give us wisdom. You give us discernment. You, you enlighten our hearts and our minds so that we can walk forward yes. into this next season being and doing that which you have called the yes. church to be and to do in this season. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. Was that good? I could just That's stop good. right there. I, I, feel like I, just, I get yeah. so, so passionate about thinking about Watching God do some of the things that some of us have been contending for and praying for for decades. I see hearts becoming tender. That we've been praying that hearts would become tender. You know, Hosea chapter 10, break up your fallow ground, the fallow ground of your heart. I see that happening right now in people's lives. I see a tender receptiveness to the gospel that I have not seen as God begins to draw yes. through his loving kindness the reassurance Amen. that he's still here and we're not alone. Amen? That's Amen. right. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans Amen. chapter 12, or not Romans chapter 12. That's a good passage too. Uh, especially in this season. Be That's transformed right. by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Stop thinking about the fear. Amen. Stop watching Fox and CNN and MSNBC. <laughs> And all of that stuff, and just stick with the facts and continue yeah. to be in the presence of God. Amen. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to read this um, through, at least through uh, the twelfth verse. I'll uh, begin with the first verse. Uh, maybe go to the fourteenth verse. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, "This month shall be your beginning of months." It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let, he, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. Yes. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Yeah. And your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year and you may take from it the, you, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel the lintel is oh, the top post of the door so that it's covered the door on all three sides there um, the lintels of the house where they where they eat it and then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all. 
with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. And you shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, and a staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the first firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute Hallelujah. judgment, <laughs> for I am the Lord. Yes. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of yes. Egypt. So this day shall you shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. And I'm going to stop there. So, there's a, there, I mean, there's so much in this passage of Scripture that a guy could just take those yeah. 14 verses and probably spend the next two months yes. digging all of that out. I don't have two months. I've got 20 minutes. So, um, we're going to breeze through some of that, but I want to give you a little bit of a little bit of background. I want to give you a little bit of, of, of understanding of of kind of how the Bible's written, how certain things are put together in the Bible. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, where we are in the church, what we're looking for, where our anchor is, is in the second advent. That's right. And so we're reading about not only a a, a physical act but also a prophetic one yeah. that points towards the first advent. Right. And so there's in, in the Bible what we call, when we study the Bible, types and anti-types and shadows. Yes. So a type is a Old Testament physical representation of right. a New Testament physical representation. So in this, what we're, what we're studying here, we see the type is in the Lamb. Yeah, that's right. The anti-type is in Christ. And the shadow is the feast that from this point forward must be every year celebrated by the Israelites. So they have the type. They haven't seen the anti-type yet because Christ hasn't come. Right. So they have the type and the shadow. Right. The shadow is something that you can see, that you can look at, that gives you the representation of yes. the type without the physical characteristics. Yeah. So... Without the lamb who actually was the Passover lamb, because they're not in Egypt, when they celebrate Passover, they're not putting blood on the doorpost. There's no plague that's coming. So that's the type. The shadow then in the festival doesn't have any of that. It has remembrance. Yes. So here's the dynamic chain I want you to see through this. As Remember, we're pointing towards the second advent, okay? Because that's where we are in, in, in our Amen. current placement in God's story. Yes. And it's all God's story that runs from the beginning to the end. That's right. So we have the type and the lamb. The anti-type is in Christ. I don't even know it's so good. I just, <laughs> I just, so carry, good. I just, just carry it all wrapped up. So the shadow is the Passover. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus says to his disciples, yes. he says, with fervent desire have I desired to share this meal with you because I'll never celebrate it again <laughs> until I celebrate it with you yeah. in the kingdom. That's right. Yeah. What's that? That's Revelation chapter 19. Yes. Revelation chapter 19 is the marriage supper of the Lamb. So what, what do we have here? We have type, Hallelujah. the Lamb in Egypt. We have the anti-type. We have Christ, the redemptive Passover Lamb. We have the festival, the shadow, Passover being celebrated. Now we have the new, we have the Lord's Supper, and we have communion, and it's all prophetically strung from Exodus to Revelation chapter 19. When we get to celebrate with yes. Jesus after the second advent yes. at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's right. Is that not exciting? Yeah, that's amazing. So we remember in the context of what we're living in right now yes. with this COVID-19 and this coronavirus is there's a story that's been strung from the Old Testament all the way yes. back in Exodus chapter 12 that yes. runs all the way to Revelation chapter 19. That story is not going to end until that's we get right. there. Amen. 
And if you don't have anything else this morning, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can look with hope towards Revelation chapter 19 yes. and say, this is temporal. This is not eternal. Amen. Eternal is what Jesus Amen. is coming back for in his church. Amen. We don't have to live in fear Amen. here because yes. we live eternal towards that Amen. second Amen. advent. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That'll preach all day yeah, and every day. Right. Some of the key things out of this that I want to really make sure that we get a hold of, um, I, and I'm just going to give a few points. The first one, number one, is the Israelites, though they were in the midst of this slavery, and they were in the midst of having seen nine other plagues, yeah. and not yet been released from their captivity. Yeah, that's right. In this moment, that's captivity was being destroyed. That's it. <laughs> Chains were being broken, and they were seeing yes, their captivity come. Him. In Isaiah chapter 61, there's a prophetic declaration about what Christ is going to come and do. Right. And part of that is that he came to proclaim liberty to the captives. And I know that there's a context right now for a lot of people who are living in captivity to fear. And I'm challenging this yeah. body, this group of people that is watching this, those of you that are watching this on live stream, to not yes. be gripped with fear. Be gripped with hope. Hallelujah. God is not finished with his story. You're a part of his story. Amen. He's not finished with you. You are a part of that. Glory to God. They knew that they were going forward in this moment. And you know, that's got to be difficult. It really does when you think about it. Nine plagues they had seen. And Pharaoh hardened his heart and said, no, you can't go. On the ninth plague, he said, all right, well, you know, you can go, but... I'm keeping all your stuff. Yeah. I'll let you go, but all your stuff is mine. Watch the contrast difference when we get to yeah. see this next point. That's right. They were led out of captivity with provision. Yeah, that's it. You know, I've walked the stores. One of my blog posts this last week was some pictures and some topics about how the store shelves are emptied and how everybody is in this panic mode of yeah. shopping. Um, you don't need to be in panic. That's right. Because there's provision available. You know, one of the things that the, 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 the body of Christ needs to understand is when we transitioned into the New Testament and became the body of Christ, that's the reason why Acts chapter 2 says what it says. That's, that's the right. reason why 1 John that's 3 right. says what it says. Because we are supposed to make sure that what we have is available to oh, those who are a part of our community of faith. So when I say, if you need toilet paper, give me a call. I'll bring you some toilet paper. That's provision that God intends to release now in this season that has to come from you and I. Man, that's not falling from the sky. God's got a body here on earth. So Old Testament, there wasn't a body here on earth. Now there's a body here on earth that's representing you and I. So they went forth out of this, one, recognizing that, that captivity was being broken off yes. of them. Yes. Recognizing that they were walking yes. in provision, and, and, I, and I jumped ahead. So uh, let me back up just a little bit to verse 2. Verse 1. Verse, one, verse, two. verse 2. This month shall be the beginning of your months. This shall be the beginning of your year. Yeah. Okay. There's a significance about the timing that God does things. Okay, So he established a new calendar, a new season, and a new direction for the people of Israel. Now watch when this timing of this COVID virus, this virus happened. Okay, I want you to get a hold of this. It falls between Purim, in which was said, for I don't know if, if for such a time as this, that I was brought into the kingdom. Her, that's Esther's that's story, right. if you haven't read it, and I'm not quoting it correctly because yeah. I had it in my head and now let's see. Um, let's see. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Body of Christ, we just celebrated her just a couple of weeks ago. We're in a moment where God is saying, do you know that you are in a time that may very well be for such a time as this. Glory to God. You're here right now. And God put you, in Psalms 139, it says, Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, he, looked, he put down all the days that were yes. for you in his book. 
He knew everything that was about you. And you're here in the middle of this story, in the middle of this season, in the middle of this timeline that happens between Purim and between Easter, between <laughs> Passover, Hallelujah. between this context of redemption and context of what God says here in this is a new beginning, it's yeah. a new calendar, it's a new season, and it's a new direction. Thank you, Jesus. To the point that he had, the, God had the opportunity to take them an even straighter path, but he said, you know what, I don't want to take them by the Philistines because I don't want them to be tainted by right. war right. in the process of me bringing them out of capti captivity and into victory. So he moved their, their calendar, he gave them a new season, he gave them a new direction, and the protection to keep them from war, yeah. he even steered them in a way that was maybe a little longer, maybe not exactly the way that they would have gone that would have been the be best and fastest way to get to Canaan, but it kept them protected yeah, that's right. in the process of that. Yeah. And so here we have a moment in time right now where we have a new season, a new beginning, and a new opportunity to go in a direction with God. Yes. My third point, they were called to holiness yeah. before they could do yes. the Passover lamb. They had to get all of the leaven yeah, that's out, right. all of it. There had to be none in there. And leaven, as we all know, is a type for sin yeah. in the Bible. There's a passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. I want to turn over and read real quick if I can, if I can get there. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 beginning in the 6th verse. It says, your glorying is no good. Do you not know that a little leaven, yeah. just a little bit, leavens the whole lump? Therefore purge yes. out the old leaven that you may be a new lump Amen. since you were truly unleavened. Yes. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, Glory was God. sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. God was calling them, and I believe God is calling That's ever so God. more right now in the midst of a lost Hallelujah. and dying and hurting and scared world, a people who are different than everybody else oh, they yes. see. God is calling forth for us to get the leaven out and walk in holiness. Amen. Amen. When we shed fear and we give confident faith, hope, and holiness, Amen. there is a testimony a that God. cannot be denied that God yeah. is in control of the situation yeah. That's right. and that he wants to move for them. That's right. They were Hallelujah. called to holiness, and I believe God is calling yeah. us right now to holiness. Amen. The next point out of that was they were called and directed to worship. In verse 27, it says that they bowed their heads in worship. I, I understand <coughs> worship maybe a little differently than some. Maybe culturally we've kind of just gotten into this. Um, into this concept of worship with, you know, skinny jeans. Worship leaders like my son is down in Dallas. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and the upbeat music and the lights, the fog machine, and you know, this is worship. Hebrew people didn't see worship like that. So Hebrew people saw worship. As, an, as a lifestyle act That's where it. everything that they did and everything that That's they participated it. in was put in this context of yeah. worship so that God would get glory out of that moment. That's right. In this call to worship, I believe our worship is going to look different. I believe that God's going to call us to live an, a lifestyle of giving glory to God in every moment with gratitude with thanksgiving for what he's doing for us right now. And so as we look at this passage of scripture and look at a call to worship, I want to drop it in the context of our storyline right here and ask you, what does next Sunday look like for you for worship? Are you relying on some Bethel YouTubes? 
Are you going to be relying maybe on on us getting a, 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 a team together and live streaming a worse, you know, them doing a song service like we would typically do? Because I want to tell you that God wants you to leave this place today in an atmosphere of worship yeah. Yeah. and walk in a lifestyle of worship that goes to tomorrow. Well, and then yeah. it goes to Tuesday, <laughs> and then it goes to Amen. Wednesday, where I'm thank you, Jesus, yeah. that I was able to get here today. Or I thank you, Jesus, that you're still holding my hand, yeah. that you're still the lifter of my head. Thank you, yeah. Jesus, that you're still protecting my family. Thank you, Jesus, that you're still giving me the opportunity to tell people how much you love yeah. them. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Lord, would you be glorified in my yeah. life today? Lord, yeah. I want to lift you up in what I do today. Lord, I want my kids to see, even in the midst of us locked yeah. in this house, I want them to see me glorifying yeah, you today. It. All the way through to next Sunday. Glory. When next Sunday rolls around, Glory. however we get to express our community of faith, we're so full of this worship context that it is so flowing out of us you, that, you know, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 5, Paul says that though I'm absent from you in body, I'm with you in spirit. And that's how we get there. That's, that's right. how we get that's to where right. we have some kind of expression of the community of faith next Sunday, no matter what it looks like, because we've worshipped all week long. We've Hallelujah. been in the presence of God all week Hallelujah. long. It's a lifestyle. But then whatever streams or however we do that, whatever happens, the presence of God comes in the midst of that. Yes. And we're connected. We're still a part of yes, each other. Yes, yes. But it comes out of a lifestyle of worship. Amen. 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 I got five Praise minutes. God. I got 40 points left to go. I think I'm just going to have to, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, I'm probably just going to have to skip through a bunch of this because I want to honor the time uh, that we have together. Um, I, 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 I want to leave with this point, and then I'm just going to read some scriptures that I want you guys to take home and meditate on. But, but, I, but I want to end with this point. This is a season where we need to be paying attention to what God says yes. and do it. So God's leadership looked a little bit different as they came out of that. He led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yeah that gave them the direction for where they were yeah. supposed to go that day. And, you know, it didn't give them the direction that they were supposed to go tomorrow yeah. or the next day or the next day. It's the context of that Psalms 119. That word is a lamp yes. unto my feet. There is a rhema word that That's God right. speaks. Logos is the written word. Rhema is the spoken word. Jesus said in John chapter 6, he said, my words are spirit. And they are life. That's right. And there's this, in this context, in this season that we're in right now, we have got to be listening to right. what God is saying and taking the steps of obedience Say it. that are momentary. Amen. I don't yeah. need to know what Z is in order to step from A to B. I That's just right. know God said this is B. This is where I want you to step. Yeah. And just like the cloud and the pillar of fire, God's promise direction and he'll give it it may not look like what you think it ought to look like because i'm an ocd i like to i don't like ambiguity i really get all angst about whether or not you give me the whole story i just don't like to have part of the story but i've learned that god's going to give me enough and if i trust him that does so much more for my heart uh, than knowing yeah, the whole yeah. thing yes you know it, it, get, living in that place of momentary trust over the place of seeing the whole story Thank and knowing Lord. how I'm going to get there. Thank you, Lord. It does my heart good. Even as an OCD guy who doesn't <laughs> like ambiguity, there's something about the presence yeah. of God Amen. settling your heart in the moment Amen. that changes Amen, the Jesus. dynamic Thank with how Lord. we operate relationally with Him. And so that's really my closing. Let me, let me give that to you again just real quick. Number one, you have a new beginning. The body of Christ has a new beginning, just like the new calendar year. God's calling us to be a holy people, just like he was calling them out and calling them to be a holy people. God's calling them forth in worship, a lifestyle of worship. Yes. That changes those dynamics. Yes. And God's calling them to follow obediently what the next step is without saying, I need to know where the end result is. Right. 
those are those four points. I gave you quite a, quite a bit more, um, but I think we'll we'll probably just leave it there. Let me give you these scriptures. Um, first being Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse five. Mm -hmm. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Yes. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has yes. said in himself being God. Glory to God. I will never leave you. Yeah. I will never forsake Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In this season, you have that promise. You're a part of Amen. his storyline. His storyline points to the second Amen. advent. Hallelujah. It doesn't end here. It doesn't That's end right. right now. And it doesn't end with you right now. <laughs> Amen? Amen. It's good. I'm just well, telling you, this is Glory good to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. There's a bunch in Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? For if God is for us, come on. Who can be against us? Who can be against us? Romans chapter 8, verse 35. For who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. How about persecution? No. How about famine? No. How about nakedness? No. How about peril? No. How about sword? No. Boy, your nose need to get louder. You mean no. no? No. That's right. Nothing is going to separate us from the love of Christ. Will a coronavirus separate us from the love of Christ? No. That's right. It's not going to separate us from the love of Christ. Yes. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, what are these things? All that stuff. All that stuff we just listed out. All yes. these things. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, coronavirus. That's right. Yet in all these things we are more than more conquerors. Than conquerors. More, more than more. conquerors through him who loved us. Yes. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, yes. nor things to come, yes. nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ oh, Jesus, hallelujah. our Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. No angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no more things to come, God. no height, no depth, no any yes. created thing. You know, coronavirus is a created thing. That's right. It's a created thing. That's right. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Now listen to this. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Amen. And the last one I'm not going to read, I'm going to leave it with you, that I'd like for you to spend some time in Psalms 91. Yes. That's because right. we're in a season where we have time and we have the opportunity to enter into the secret place yeah. and to get into the shelter of the Most High God yeah. and to stand in His midst, in the midst of His presence in our lives for this time frame. Amen. So I'm going to give you the take home this Amen. week to read through and meditate on Psalms 91 and all the good things that are in there. Amen. 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 Amen.